right, you know. What about? I do like hearing about your family and friends. I do wish you'd talk about them. I, I, I do, uh, sometimes. Well, apart from anything else, it's embarrassing. I had no idea your father was in until your mother mentioned it. No, but my, but my father's not ill. He is in poor health. <laughs> he, uh, he had a prostate operation some years ago, and he's been vaguely off colour ever since. <laughs> no, and my brother's in the army, by the way, just to complete the picture. He's in the army in Egypt. Yes, I know. No, I suppose my mother told you. Yes. No, well, seeing as she's telling you everything, there's no need for me to duplicate the information, is there? <laughs> well, is it? Who's Chris? Christopher was a friend of mine at Shadow. Your mother obviously liked him? Yes. Yes. Uh, he, 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 he was a remarkable boy. Uh, very, very clever. Very, very perceptive. Very mature for his age. He made everyone else seem not so ordinary. And one of those friendships he only ever had when he was young. Ah, I worship the ground he walked on. Have you kept in touch? He died. Now he, he, had, he had TB when he was a boy, and um, ah, I didn't know that. He, he never told me, and uh, he, he, he never really recovered. And, uh, he, 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 was, he was taken out of school one night, and uh, well, we were all asleep. And the next day, I, I, I found he'd been rushed to hospital. He died, um, six days later, Thursday, February 13th, 1913. Wow, that's devastating. Poor Alan. I, I felt, um, I felt it should be me that should have died, and, and not him. And the only possible reason for me to continue to live was to achieve something I could no longer do. I believe, I really thought after he died that, that he was still with me in spirit and, and could help me. It was, it was that, I suppose, that made Mother think that I was devoutly religious, but it wasn't that. And I was, um, I was obsessed. I was mean, obsessed with the idea that, with the question, could Christopher's mind exist without his body? Is it possible for thought processes to take place in something other than a living brain. It was an obsession staying with me for a long time. But in, in, in a way, um, in a real way, um, all of the problems I solved in my work, well, they all led back to Christopher. But what would he be missed? <laughs> I think you'd be pleased. I, 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 I hope so. Oh, why did you come to church, Anne? It would give your mother so much pleasure. Because it would be a lie. But I like pretending that ghastly drink isn't ghastly. <laughs> it's a pretty harmless pretense. But most pretense is self-delusion, and that's far from harmless. I mean, look at all our confreres and uh, Bletchley rushing around so, so radiantly optimistic. I mean, why do it? Why? I mean, what's the point? But it's funny than being gloomy all the time. Well, is it? Do you know, I've, I've worked out the odds of us actually solving the U-boats in England. Guess what they are? Well, I suppose... That's 50,000 to one. Ag against. Well, perhaps we'll catch your coat book. Look, I'm likely. But my faith in the Admiralty is nil. Well, we might be lucky. Yeah, that pigs might fly. <laughs> and I'd be worried about what would happen if we actually lost the war, how we'd survive. We mustn't think such things. But we had to. Otherwise, we're just burying our heads in the sand. All we can do is live from day to day. Everything changes. You know that. We ought to make plans. Like what? Oh. Ah, <laughs> uh, I was thinking of buying some razor blades. <laughs> <laughs> razor blades? Oh, they'd be in short supply if we lost the war. At least I'd have something to sell. <laughs> How many razor blades? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, enough to fill a large suitcase. Oh, well, you're not serious. Well, I certainly am. You can't just walk into a chemist and buy hundreds, thousands of razor blades. Well, can you? Well, I don't know. Possibly. Well, you can't. 
I could buy some silver. Silver what? Well, lumps of it. Ingots or whatever they're called. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I could go to the bank, I could, I could draw out some money, I could buy some silver, bury it, and then dig it up after all. <laughs> bury it where? Well, anywhere. But a place. Oh, God. But why not? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, I, I've already looked into buying the silver. Look, look, look at that. It's a fur cone. I can see it's a fur cone. Well, take it. And look at it. Uh, I'll tell you something uh, amazing about that. It looks ordinary enough to me. Well, uh, define what is meant by a, a Fibonacci sequence. Well, a Fibonacci sequence is a sequence of numbers where each is the sum of the previous two, so... 1 and 1 equals 2, 1 and 2, 3, 2 and 3, 5, 3 and 5, 8, 5 and 8, 13, etc, etc, et and so on and so on, four marks, well done. Shall I now, now, now look at that? Look at that fur coat. Now look, look at the pattern of the graphs and the leads. You'll see how they spiral around. You have 8 round to the left, and 13 round to the right. Uh, the, the numbers always follow the Fibonacci sequence. Always. Always. And it's not just fur coats. Uh, the, the petals on most plants, flowers, do exactly the same thing. Amazing, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it prompts the question, is God a mathematician? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Prof. I love you, you know that. Yes. <laughs> You're supposed to say I love you too. I know. <laughs> well, say something. Well, I, I don't think of myself as being particularly lovable. Well, you are. But there are lots more lovable men at Bletchley than me. Well, that's where you're wrong. No, they're, they're big silly. I, I see them every lunchtime rushing around, playing cricket, laughing. Uh, I'm surprised you haven't fallen in love with one of them. Because they're dull, that's why. Oh, and so am I. Well, that's where you're wrong. But yes, you're untidy and messy. You're lacking in almost all the social graces. <laughs> your clothes are stained and you bite your nails. You tell the truth from every kind of to tell a lie. And you have no patience for people who bore you. But you are not dull. And I love you. As a matter of fact, I am. Um, I, I do love you. As a friend. As a, as a friend. Well, that might change. Perhaps that might change. I'm a homosexual. I know, <laughs> but it doesn't stop me from loving you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would stop me making love to you. And I don't even own a turkey baster. <laughs> I don't want that sort of life, and I, I don't think you should <laughs> That, that drink is undrinkable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shall I make some tea? Uh, no, give me that. Uh, uh, tea or sherry? I don't mind. Well, I, I think it should be tea. If you're going to the church, uh, well, you don't want you breathing out of the pews all over the vicar. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Has Alan said something to upset you? No, of course not. Oh, sorry. It's none of my business, I'm sorry. Everything's fine. Everything's perfectly all right. He's always been his own worst enemy, even when he was young, even at school. His headmaster at Sherburn called him antisocial, I remember. We were very upset. I'd uh, better get ready for church. Well, don't come if you don't want to. No, really, I'd love to. I'll, um... I'll just take these. Thank you. 